Salam Tana, Taina Yisteling. And then Menacho, when the moche is the Dehenanacho is the I well, is I good, but Dehena, it means are you saved? Are you, are you a Christ man or a Christ woman? Now, what we're going to do right here is continue this particular um, series. And we're still in Rastafari organizing Jah's business. Now, the Shabbat. You know, the Shabbat, the Shabbat, I and I keeping the Shabbat. It's only a day away before we get into the Shabbatical uh, reading and feeding, even though ones and ones can, you know, begin from now, really. Um, but in the Shabbatical reading and feeding, do we put it up here? Not just yet. Deuteronomy, we mentioned in the first part on get money, you understand, or get wealth. Um, yeah, that's a that, that's a very particular issue because a lot of folks, a lot of us, are unregenerated. We have certain ideas or certain um, concepts concerning money that have been derived from our um, unregenerated experiences in the world with men and people, and the majority of um, men and people like ourselves, who were or who might still be or who are unregenerated. You understand? What do you mean unregenerated? Re means again, and and generate. Gener means to be born from 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 the, the the Greek word. Now, yes, we have to get into the roots and the meaning. Some say that it's not necessary, but it says that a novice. You know, I not not to suffer. You know, a novice. You understand? To to try to take authority when they don't know. Now, if the Holy Spirit. If you recognize the role of the Holy Spirit and the and the person of the Son, then it does not matter whether one is so-called, you know, um, young or old or locks are long or short. It's whether they know the truth or not. You know what I'm saying? And that's the main thing: whether they know the truth and whether they practice, seek to practice what they preach. But before we can even preach or proclaim, we need to learn. We need to be learners, and that's where discipleship. You know, that's where discipleship comes in. That's where, proverbially speaking, you know, the rubber meets the road. We get traction. We can we can move forward. Now, in this particular um, speaking here on, on money, and I want to speak to money, you understand, and wealth, because there's a lot of, like I said, false concepts. And there's some unlearned and unstable individuals who, who are zealous. They have a zeal for God. They have a zeal for Kedamawi Haila Shalasi. They have a seemingly seemingly they have a zeal for Haila Shalasi the first. But it's without knowledge. You know what I'm And as we study the scriptures, even in the book of um, Ephesus or Ephesians, the epistle to the Ephesians, it speaks to us of spiritual um, warfare. But before even that, it talks about our unity. You see, for us to be overcomers in the spiritual warfare, we must be united, become one, Tawahido, with the knowledge, right, of the Son of God. That's where the person of Yeshua HaMoshiach, you understand, of Getachi and Jesus Christos becomes, as we say, Bamarinya, it becomes Wana Wana. The, like a, the main, main, wana means main, the, the main, main um, issue, the main, main matter. Um, the, that says the first principles of the oracles of God. You read that in um, Hebrews, the epistle of Hebrews, uh, chapter chapter 6, I think verse 1, you understand where it says that they're going to move on from that because you've got to remember who, who is being spoken to in the epistle to the Hebrews, it's the Hebrews. Each one of the epistles that we have speaks to a different community, and to each community um, of uh, of Nazarawian, of Nazarites, or later called a uh, Christian or or Christ, Christ ones, Messianics. You understand? Because he's the Moshiach, and we are. The messiahs. We are to be messiahs. In a sense, we are to be Christ or anointed ones. You understand? But only truly if we recognize who is that only begotten, Bain Ha Elohim, 
You understand? And then we can receive of him in spirit and in truth. But some maintain falsely, but they maintain, and some unstable and learned ones might get deceived by what they maintain, that his majesty, Kedamawi Haile Shilase, has um, said, say they, that the supernatural is a false concept. Now, when we say, well, prove it, they show us some verses, very good verses, verses that, and, and, and utterances that we had read previously, and we give thanks to read them again. Um, so give thanks for that. But you still do not prove that point because nowhere within those um, word sound, within that word sound, those utterances, of Kedamawi Haile Selassie, do we read um, in translation supernatural? Do we read false concept or do we read it together as the interpolator? You see, ones who, who don't really get grounded in, 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 in the language and don't become learners, you know, not just in this society, but just learners of the word, disciples of the word to learn. You know, and that means you have to go into the um, the root languages. Now, some say, well, the word is one and the same, and that means, you know, that is a novice mistake. Yes, you might find certain Rastafari, you understand, who have been, quote, trotting Rastafari in the traditions of Rastafari for a long time, and they, they might maintain that same faulty um, misinterpretation, but it's not based on our hymenos. It's not based on the living faith of the King of Kings and his Christ. So we said, let us just go over some of the, the issues that we're at right now, some of the subject matters that we're teaching and learning and growing on, because we also have, you know, Jah's business to do. You understand? We have the work of God, which is first and foremost, and that is exercising true and faithful witness. How can we exercise true and faithful witness if we're not willing to be teachable? You see, and the scripture speaks about that. There are many of those who are unteachable. You understand? Um, and because they're unteachable, how can they learn? You understand? How can they learn? So another point about the spiritual. First of all, the supernatural. When we say supernatural, do we need to um, write this out right here? Let's write this out right here. Super. Right, super, right, plus natural, right, the natural equals what? What does it equal? Some say it equals a false concept because they are lost in mistranslation in a, in a um, white Western Eurocentric Gentile misunderstanding. You know, and even the Gentiles, even the Europeans and others, they have gone through great lengths or lengths. You understand, to go to Ethiopia, to send missions there under all sort of hardships, looking for manuscripts. You understand, and many of them never having any knowledge of many of the languages, including the Ethiopic, went through great diligence, you understand, to study and to find out what the language means and, and how to speak the language, or basically, firstly, how to interpret the language. Now, we look at the world today, you understand, remember what the scripture says in Hosea, my people what, my people perish, you understand, because of a lack of knowledge. You can, some say, well, this is good enough, right here is where we, only the Bible, only the facts and the Bible, you understand, we don't need to get to the root of what, that is, that's laziness. You understand, the scriptures, if you could interpret, you understand, the scriptures say that the fool says in his heart, the seneth. You know, senef belibu amlak yelim yilal. You understand? In other words, the, the, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. But if you look at that word foolish, senef, even in the Proverbs, and you just study that one word and the, you see, the Afro-Shemitic languages, the original languages, you have to recognize what language we're speaking. You understand? I mean, you have to really recognize what language we're speaking and the fact that it is, it is, it is very limited. This is why Kedamawi Haile Shalase, he gave us, he gave us a, a, a key when he said before the, um, before the uh, uh, League of Nations, 
let's see, do we have do we have the autobiography? Do we have the autobiography right here? Um All right. Yeah, he said. He said in. He said in the auto, in the autobiography, right? And, and we try to, you know, show ones and ones. But you know, some people have shown I and I things over the years that I didn't get to see at first. You know, I was caught up like they are. That's why we said, you know, ones and ones on a level remind I and I. You know, um, on a level. But they have to get off that level and and come to a higher level. Otherwise, they're going to fall into the condemnation of the devil. You understand? If they stay on that level after ones and ones have already borne witness, giving you the evidence, so you can just say, you know, um, give me time to check this out for myself. And, you know, at least you can check it out. But anyway, here's what His Majesty says. His Majesty says, and this is on page um, uh, 299 in the English, and if you have an Amharic of Hiwatenaya uh, Ethiopia Rimjo, My Life in Ethiopia's Progress, 1892 to 1937. This is the translation by um, Edward Ullendorf, right? And we look at it like a, almost like a book of Luke in a sense, if you understand Luke in relation to the other, um, the other uh, gospel writers, right? Um, but right here it says, His Majesty is saying, I should have liked to speak to you in French, right? But as it is in the Amharic language alone, right, that I am able to speak my mind from my heart, and I get this, and with all the force of my spirit, I would beg the forgiveness of the General Assembly of the League of Nations for not speaking in French. You understand? Because His Majesty had to speak, right, had to speak in the Amharic language because it was the only way, and he says right here, that he could speak from his mind. Now, if we say that Edamawi Haile Shalase is God, or we say he's I and I, God Father, he's Abba, Father, right? Then we should understand why this is important to us. And not try to say, well, that was just because of such and such and such of so, so on. That's, see, a novice, may, a newcomer can say that. You understand? But only um, so much would, you know, um, the assembly tolerate that sort of, you know, that, that sort of thing. That's why we showed you the, the example of Arius and Arian and so forth and so on. From my heart, and get this, with all the force of my spirit, with all the force of my spirit. Some say that, well, when he says... Um, well, when you say spirit, because let's answer this up while we have it up here. Let's answer this. Supernatural, the super plus natural, the supernatural equals the spiritual. Right? The supernatural equals the spiritual. Are you taking that down? It's very important to understand that. Now, some say that the supernatural is a false concept. They can have, they have right to their own opinion. But now, what we take issue with them is when they say that, well, his imperial majesty, this is the teaching, or this is what his imperial majesty has said or has taught. They are making a mistake in pretending and assuming. You understand? They're making a mistake because the spiritual, now in the spiritual, there are true and there are false concepts. This is what, that's perhaps what they maybe should have said, but I don't think that's what they meant to say. But that's what we want our brothers and sisters to know. Another thing is that in, um, in Ephesians, some of y'all have heard this, and some might have heard this and never really found out where in the Bible it is. Others know where in the Bible it is, but they add words, right? They add words. So let me show you two, two things concerning the supernatural is the spiritual, right? His Majesty never said, you know, saying that the supernatural is a false concept. You know, saying that the supernatural, because that's to say that the spiritual is a false concept. That's to say that the spiritual world is a false concept. And that will be um, opposite and antithesis to the hymenote, to your hymenotachinin masharet, or to the foundation of our faith, of our living faith. You know, saying, now, why is all of this important in Rastafari organized? Because See, when we organize, what are we organizing? We organize Rastafari. 
We are that corporate, you understand, that corporate man. He is the head. As Christ is the head of the church, let's understand this. As Christ is the head of the church, and the, the, the body is actually fed from the head, from the ras. You understand? So we have to pay uh, attention, you understand, to the teaching of his master and not interpolate because we lack the, the, the gift or we have not received Yeshua. If we don't receive Yeshua and the new birth, we can't receive those, those things of the Spirit. You understand? I think we touched on, um, we had touched on previously Romans, right, and the whole natural man thing. You know, we know that many are, are lost in um, translation or, or mistranslation, but it tells us right here that the, you know, that the natural, that the natural man, that he doesn't receive, right, he doesn't receive the things of God. You know what I'm saying? Because they must be spiritually, what? Spiritually discerned. Now, to some, that might seem supernatural. Well, really, it basically, you know, it basically is supernatural. When you really understand it, there is a supernatural, you understand, understanding it as a supernatural um, concept to that. But let's, go, let's get right into Ephesians for a moment, right? They get, oh, one other point, they, one other argument they try to use, right? They say, well, when Christ said, um, you know, when he says spirit, he's just speaking of his word. And they're going to, I think, John chapter 6 or those chapters right there. He's speaking of his word, right? That the word, for Christ says, it's, it's the word that I speak. You understand? They are spirit and they are life. You know, was, and they're forgetting that in the scripture there's two kinds of words. Right? There's two kind of words. There's the, the logos as the written word, and then there's the logos that has become flesh. Now, if a word becomes flesh, and you say that the word is the spirit, and the word becomes flesh, that in itself is a supernatural. That's above what normally happens. Right? You, you know, it's like your, 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 your papa didn't look at your mama and talk, and then she got pregnant. You know what I'm saying? No, no, there was a natural... You know what I'm saying? It was a, na a natural process, and, and, and hopefully it was good for them, right? But anyway, um, let's go to Ephesians right now. Let's go to Ephesians for a particular moment, because you're going to see how all of this connects when we start to talk about um, doing jobs business, you know what I'm saying, and when issues like money, you know what I'm saying, and wealth come into the picture, how these can be the most divisive issues, especially for an unregenerated, you know, saying, group of folks working in his majesty's name or in Christ's name, but not in and through his spirit, not, in, not, not with a, a regenerated, you know, saying, a regenerated heart, a newborn consciousness, but they're still in their old man ways, you know, saying, they're trying to bring philosophy you understand, into the teaching of his majesty. You understand, but this is not a feel out softly. You understand, it's not a feel out softly. I and I rebuke you in the word and through the word with the spirit directly because it's not a feel out softly. You understand, um, or mealy mouth like a lot of the people who are encouraging some of these unstable and unlearned um, ones and ones out there. They, they're making you walk the plank. They're putting you out on the ledge. You understand? Because they know the further you go, the weaker the branch gets, and it's going to, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so here we're in, and this is interesting because we wanted to speak on um, the prisoners, the prisoners um, outreach project and, and the whole prison ministry, how that's very, very important if we recognize what um, Matthew chapter 25 says. You know, like, when, when were you in prison, Lord, and we came and we visited you, we inquired about you? When was that? Your sense is when you have done this for the least. So if you have not done this for the least one of these, my brethren, you have not done this for me. So let's go to the, the beginning of Ephesians, right, Ephesians chapter 4. Now, something else that we were looking at, it came across Ephesus. Ephesus had come up. I think when we was counseling a, one of the sister, and you understand, we was counseling at Ephesus. It's interesting because when you're on the, when you're on John's pathway, you understand his his spiritual way. You remember in 
Indiana Jones, one of the movies, right? This is this is a worldly example. This is show you, you understand, or at least to demonstrate. And even in the Bible, we have they give examples from their time to demonstrate to the people who they were directly communicating with. So sometimes when you don't study the word, you don't understand the 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 right concepts according to the right context. Like when one says that uh, the supernatural is false, you understand? That's bad enough if it's your opinion. You understand? It's worse when you want to put this in the mouth of His Imperial Majesty and then show us verses that you have to interpolate. You see, you know, you have to read something in to the meaning of it. You understand? You have to read something in to it. You understand? But it's not what really it says because you don't have the Spirit. You see, you have not received the Spirit because you deny the Spirit. That says that any blasphemy to the Father can be forgiven, right? Any blasphemy of the Son can be forgiven. But it says if you blaspheme the men says the Kedus, right? The the Kedus, uh, the the Ruach HaKodesh in the Hebraist Kwankwa in the Hebrew, if you blaspheme the Spirit, then there can be no forgiveness. You understand? Know until you repent, until you turn around. You understand? Know because if you're in the, if you're in a state of blasphemy to the Holy Spirit, then that is the means, you know what I'm saying, that is, that is the very means right there, like we say right now, the irate, in fact, I use this example, I use this example again here, um, it's like, you know how some people are not from the hood, you know what I'm saying, they didn't grow up in the hood, the ghetto, you know what I'm saying, I'm not really happy and proud that I grew up in the ghetto, or I was exposed to that, but it is what it is, you know what I'm saying, and I am who I am, but, you know when they are those people who, because they say hip-hop becomes popular and, and, and people see videos and other stuff, you know, they see the marketing of hip-hop and everything. And they grow up in the suburbs, the burbs, right? And then they want to be hip-hop, you know what I mean? So now they, they try to dress that way. And, and you know how when you see them do that, it's like if you really are hood, as they say, in and, and, and this sense, if you really are Yehuda, you know what I'm saying? If you are Yehuda. Right, if you are really of Judah, and you see ones and ones come along and try to, as the Yardi say, pop style, right? They try to pop style and everything. You kind of almost see it so clearly, you know, it like it stands out. But they, they've been doing like natural work, you know, they've been working naturally, like they bought the clothes, they bought this, they try to act like, yo, what's up, man? What's up, man? So from the and it's like, you know, and we would say, oh man, that's corny, man, you know, that's. You know, so, but, but why? Why do we say that? Because they might have all the right gear on. You know what I'm saying? They might have the right jewelry on or whatever like that. They may be, but they don't have the spirit. Something, they're lacking that spirit. And even, even in that um, 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 level of reality, even being unregenerated, we notice something. Because we still have spirit, even when we're unregenerated. But that, that spirit has to be regenerated, right? Um, we even notice that they don't got the, like, they don't got it. And then some folks you can school. You might school them and show them, yo, 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 homie, that's not how you, no, 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 stop, 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 stop. Now, they don't stop and they keep, yo, I'm, I'm hood, man, I'm really, really hood. You know, you, you know, it might get bad or you might just have to just, 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 X them out, X communicate, like, yo, get out my face, man, you know, you know what I mean, like, we're not, I'm not playing that, you know, and they might think, oh, because you, you don't like my hoodiness, because I'm really, really super, I'm going to take this over, and they want, if they keep going, they want to getting themselves hurt, I mean, we all know that, and it's not because somebody personally uh, dislikes them, but they're going to meet the wrong person, you know what I'm saying, and this is, in a sense, um, what happened, or what allegedly happened with um, Snoop Dogg, a.k.a. with his new uh, name, Snoop um, Lion, if you remember a couple of years ago, he did a song, you know, Murder Was the Charge That They Gave That's the name of it, Murder Was the Charge They Gave Me? Some about Murder Was the Charge That They Gave Me. There's a backstory where an Ethiopian, right, uh, a young Ethiopian um, had, for lack of a better word, faked the funk. Right, and Snoop and some of his people, click gang, whatever back then, had um, shot him, you know, because he rushed up, he acted a certain way, and he might have been a fan or something like that. But but he 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 did not know the makreb, he didn't know he didn't, he didn't know the approach. You understand? He he didn't have the right approach. 
You know what I'm saying? That's a very important word in here, um, the approach. He didn't know how to approach one and one. And he probably thought that, yo, from practicing, looking in the mirror, having other people who didn't have the spirit, who wasn't hood, tell him, like, yeah, nigga, you're really hood. You understand? And then he went out there on a mission. And in a sense, he, he lost his life. And when I first heard about it, I was like, yo, F that nigga Snoop, man. How you kill an Ethiopian? But when I heard the whole story, I was like, because I, I knew, you know what I mean? <laughs> Born and Grow and BK, I, I knew that those sort of things, I didn't roll with a lot of ones and ones, but I still, you still had the spirit of discernment. So, you know what I mean? So you knew who was who and you didn't, you know, but some folks didn't. You know what I mean? Some folks really, really, it's like even little babies. Some little baby won't mess with a dog. They'll look at the dog. They're not afraid, but they'll stay away from the dog, so to speak, right? And other babies will rush in, you understand, you know, maybe even try to hit the dog, and they might get, get uh, you know, they might get eaten up, so forth. So, so even little children, who has the sermon, who doesn't have the sermon, that's not for, for I or the I so much to judge, but each one must must judge themselves, must check themselves. If they think they stand, you understand, they must check themselves, check how they're standing, check the foundation, the groundation they're standing on, least or less they fall. All right? So that idea, false idea that His Majesty said that the supernatural is a false concept is categorically untrue, and unless they want to throw some other verses out, you understand, where they say, well, this explains, or, or this you know, but don't interpolate. I mean, don't interpolate. It's very simple. When we talk about the Bible, this matches with the Bible or, or Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christ, our black Lord and Savior, we show you the verses. When we talk about the Amharic language, we show you the direct verses. And then they try to interpolate away from the plain sense of it. What's interesting is that in that particular um, um, quote from His Majesty where he spoke about the Amharic language alone, you will see that he speaks about before the wild wild, and then if you look at Ethiopian history, there was the Battle of Adowa. You remember the Battle of Adowa, the the Wuchale, the Wuchale, Wuchale, the Wuchale Semimenet. Uh, you understand the the Wuchale Agreement, and it was all based on a word. You see, in the Italian form of the agreement, you understand they had that that Emperor Menelik had to conduct all of his foreign policies through um, Italia. But in the original Amharic of it, it said that His Majesty may consult or might use them. But, but in other words, it basically said that His Majesty did not have to. The key thing was have to, you understand, versus, well, at his pleasure he may. You understand? And, and, and that's basically the foundation of, so don't tell me that translation in our language is not important. You know what I'm saying? You could be a novice all you want, a newcomer all you want. Remember, you know, what it says in, in Timothy. You understand? I mean, please understand that it's not a personal thing. You understand? Many of us had to read that verse and really recognize what that meant to really humble us. You know what I'm saying? To humble us, to, to recognize his truth and to become teachable. You know, saying to become teachable, to become agreeable, not to be so-called disagreeable. You know, saying we say disagreeable to the truth. You know, saying don't come with no no philosophies or interpolations at the basic discipleship level is necessary. You don't have to interpolate in it. It's, it's rather clear. You know, if you can read, you understand, then then you can. You know, you have an opportunity to receive life. Or if one who can read communicate to you the clear word, you know what I'm saying, and that's, you know, that's what's very, um, you know, that's the big question mark right here, right now, so the supernatural equals the spiritual, do we have that right there, do we understand that, that the supernatural equals the spiritual, an example of it, some say, no, the spirit is the word, right, that's what they say, this is the spirit is the word, you know, like the, like the words in the Bible, remember what's Talk about how the written word is dead, but how the living word, the spiritual word, we have logos and we have rhema. Logos and rhema, right? And the rhema is the active word. See, we're living in a word-activated reality. You understand? And though we are to be in the blessing, we can curse ourselves by our own words. 
That's why Rastafari teaches word, sound, and power. And even on the the the, the previous um in, in, in among the first proclaimers of Rastafari, that principle was there, checking how we spoke words, because we recognized some words, especially in English, had twisted or deceiving, you know, aspects to it. You know what I'm saying? So even at that level, which I, I liken to, to Kidner Garden, but not to say that it, it, it's, no, not, remember, Kidner Garden is the garden of the children. It's like Eden. It's almost like we came out of that. You understand? And now we're wandering around. We have all this information and ones are saying, oh, uh, the language is not that important. But what about what his majesty says? He said, language is the key of culture, the key. Some go to the Ethiopian church and get baptized to learn the Ethiopian culture. No, 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 no. If you're going to, to the church, you understand? It should be about Yeshua HaMoshiach. You understand? It should be about Jesus Christos Getachin. You understand? It's not about culture in that sense. It's the language that is the key. You understand? It's the language that is the key. And we even point to Zephaniah, Old Testament, right? Let me give you this verse right here before we get further into Ephesians, uh, Ephesians or Ephesus, the epistles to those in Ephesus known as Ephesians. Let's go to Proverbs. Let me remember some of the, some of the Hebrew Israelites, even though some of them still are blind, but they are our, you know, they are... You know, they are enemies for the gospel's sake, but they are beloved because of our black Hebrew, Israelite, Ethiopian Hebrew forefathers. You know what I'm saying? So we have to recognize that and, and to walk, you know, to walk in grace there. Let's go to Proverbs. You know, a lot of times they would say the New Jacks, you know, New Jacobs, you know, New Israelites, so to speak. You know, they'll say you better stick to Psalms and Proverbs, you know, which are some of the basic books. Stick to Psalms and Proverbs. And, and the weekly Torah portions, you understand, and the New Testament readings, and, and, and grow like that, you understand, or find a, a good Bible, Rastafari Bible study group of brothers and sisters who are really studying and seeking, you understand, seeking him according to him, not interpolating. Here, let's go to um, Proverbs chapter 30, Proverbs chapter 30, right? This is the words of Agur, the son of Jaka. Even the prophecy. So, you remember when we read in um, Corinthians how it says that prophecy is even more so, it's more beneficial, you understand, for what it uses the word, um, it uses the words edify, you understand, what's edify? See, if we listen to these fools, they will tell us what they think edifying means. You know, that is exactly, you know, what happened within the church where the brotherhood you understand? We all are brothers and sisters and mothers, but it became divided because one said, said, I'm the priest. But that's not according to covenant. We are to be a nation or a kingdom, rather, of the priesthood. So all of us who truly are born again, you know, and come to the majesty, come to Kedus Abba in and through faith, living faith in our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Jehovah's, we are all priests. We are all priests. You know what I'm saying? Now people say, well, what about the woman? Is she a priestess? Not in your old, old Testament idolatrous and not in the worldly sense. You know what I'm saying? But in the principle, yes. It's true, there are some brothers and sisters who might know more. They are the gifts to the assembly, to the body, to help build I and I up. Like even Sister um, Kedis Selassie with her... Her, her postings on Ethiopian World Net. You know what I'm saying? We find that to be very refreshing for I and I. So, you know what I'm saying? That builds I and I up when I read them. Those, some of the things I might have seen before, some things I might have read, even if I read it in them hard, I can spend hours and days, you know, interpreting it and meditating on it, speaking to Ja. You know what I'm saying? Because the one who speaks the language, and, and if others don't understand, they're speaking to Ja. You know what I'm saying? But if one doesn't understand it, you understand? It's, it, they cannot really edify others. You understand? And still there's, there's more to come as they grow. As they grow. So remember, we have an inborn conception in Rastafari. But we have to bring that inborn conception to its full birth. You understand? To its full birth. So right here is the words of um, Agor, the son of Jaka, even the prophecy. The man spake to Ithiel, even to Ithiel and Ukal. Surely 
I am more brutish than any man and have not the understanding of a man. You see, now some folks can't, can't really get that right there. I mean, I was saying to a, a, a sister who has gone through some situations with her, with her brethren, so forth and so on. Sometimes it's the brethren who's gone through some situation with his sister. And I was speaking to one on one and I said, um, you know, and I began to recognize myself. That's why it says that when one is overcome with a fault, you know, I mean, those who are what? Spiritual world, right? Not those who are natural. Those who are natural be like, F that nigga, you know, fix that nigga, stupid fool. You know what I mean? That's how they were there. They wouldn't even go to that one to try to restore them. You know what I'm saying? But it says when we do this, we have to consider ourselves less or least we fall into temptation. You know, you're trying to reason with one, and they're being hard-headed. You know, and you're getting tempted to maybe say some things or even do some things. You will have to consider yourself. You know, so you really have to, because you, if you fall in that temptation, it's like they say two wrongs, in other words, don't make a right. So here, Agor, he, he acknowledges something that we all must acknowledge. See, if most of us don't acknowledge this. Like, most of the brethren, not most, I won't say most, but there are some certain brethren who don't really receive Yeshua HaMoshi as our Lord and Savior according to the wind Gale, because it's like, well, he's just another black man. You, you, you know what I mean? Because they getting caught up on the natural. You know what I'm saying? They getting caught up on the natural. Now, are there false concepts in the spiritual, the supernatural? Well, of course. I mean, this is this is what we've been showing and seeking to demonstrate to you when we even show you some of the pictures. You understand some of the pictures of um of of, of Caesar Borgias. You're right. Some of the pictures of Caesar Borgias, and that's a false. Those are false concepts. You understand? False concepts. Let's get this right here. False concepts in the spiritual. Let's let's hold this right over here. And let's you want to see some false concepts in the spiritual? This is a false concept in the spiritual. This right here is a false concept in the spiritual. Remember how Ephesians talked about spiritual wickedness in high places? Now I know some of you'll probably say, high and low. And low places, because you heard that over and over. It's almost like mind control. You know what I'm saying? But you never checked out if it's true. You think it's a mantra. You know what I'm saying? But it's a mantra that disempowers you spiritually, according to the order of his magic. This is also, right here, here you go, here you go. This is also another false concept in the spiritual. This is a, another false concept. Most folks, most kids, Ethiopians and others would say, oh, this is... um." Um, Mariam Nalichua, you know, Mary and her child, uh, Jesus Christos M Malet, to say. No, it's not. This is Lucretia, Lucretia, or Lucrezia Borgia. This is Lucrezia Borgia, and that's her illegitimate son right there. You know who, what his name is? No, he is not Yeshua HaMoshia. You understand? That is Rodrigo. Rodrigo de Borgias. You know what I'm saying? This is a false concept in the spiritual because this is the brother. Some say he might have been the father, actually, when you know how wild the family is. And don't, don't take my word for it. Go look at the Borgia films. And there's, you know, they have something on. We, we have a copy, an older copy in our um, doc videos, and there's a new one that came on one of these um, um, uh, cable tabloid channels right here. This is this is Caesar. This is Caesar. Remember the people that didn't want, to want Yeshua HaMoshiach? You understand? So they got Caesar. They said, we have no king but Caesar the Borgia. Well, they said Caesar, but, but Jai, having a sense of humor, you understand, allowed them this, since they turned their back on his son. You know what I'm saying? This is the false concept they got. You know what I'm saying? This is the false concept still going on. You understand the, the image of the Antichrist because the evidence tells you that it's a man-made image. It's a man-made image that becometh an idol. You've seen the whole Olympics. You've seen what happened in the whole Olympics. You, you already know. You understand? You know, the, it's like a spiritual rape. When you understand what Olympics mean, right, when you understand what Olympics mean, it's interesting. Olympics, the Olympics, Olympus was a, was a, was a convert to uh, Christina. And it means Elysian. You heard about the Elysian field? Some say, oh, that was mythology. 
You understand? Um, every story, basically, even if you tell it, well, look what happened to me. Let me tell you the story. It really happened to you, but now you're presenting the story is a kind of a mythology. So overstand words. Don't fall because of a lack of understanding or groundation foundation. Overstand. So it says, surely, this is what we have to admit, surely, I am. And my read this now in my overstanding, I am too. That's why I say I am too more brutish than any man. Sometimes I don't know within myself, my own natural flesh, how I not have patience for some of the foolishness. Just as a, as a person, you understand? But it's that grace. You see, it's that grace of Yeshua HaMoshiach. Surely I am more brutish than any man. You understand? So a man say, me a bad boy. I say, I'm, I'm a gangster too. What you talking about, nigga? You know what I mean? It's like, I'm brutish too. And I have not the understanding of man. You understand? I don't have the understanding of man. I neither learned wisdom. I didn't go to no secret society. You understand? I wasn't inducted. You understand? Into any so-called wisdom. But among the brethren and the sister and you understand of Rastafari, the true lovers of Yeshua HaMoshiach. Right? Nor it says, have I the knowledge of the holy? Now this is very key. The knowledge of the Kedus, the Kedusu. The knowledge of the holy and the knowledge of the holy one. I and I didn't have the knowledge of Yeshua HaMoshiach. You know, overstand, I didn't even know that he was, you know, like if God was one of us, if he was one of us, you know that song, I didn't know that he was one of us. You know what I'm saying? I was seeing Caesar Bourgier, and I'm like, why this guy knocking on somebody's door at night? You know what I mean? I'm like, what's going on here? You know what I mean? And they say, well, he, he died on a tree. And I'm seeing black people getting lynched and stuff. I'm like, oh, that's, yeah, really? You know, once in, I think maybe one picture of a white guy or a Jewish guy or a European Jew, should I say, a Euro Jew who got hung on a tree or something like that because he was supporting the black people. You know what I mean? And, you know, may Jah have mercy on his soul, too. You know what I'm saying? Because maybe, maybe he knew the truth. You know, he was caught up in the flesh you know, European flesh, but he knew the truth. I didn't have knowledge of the Holy One, of his, of, of his divine majesty. I didn't have no knowledge of, you know, I, I came actually through a kind of a Hebrew-Israelite kind of school. You understand? Afro-American, black Jew, the black Jews of Harlem. You know, from the foundation, the groundation. I, you know, I dabbled a little bit with the project, the project Jews, you know, the black Jews, you know, that sort of a level. But I got to really read about the real foundation and foundation in books like this right here that you need to check out right here, the Black Jews of Harlem. So, so you know, pause this, take down the name. You might be able to find it out there on the internet. This is like, you know, you see this is the old copy up here, the Black Jews of Harlem, and we showed you in this in some of the earlier vids where where the original ones from the 30s and everything was recognizing, acknowledging, in fact, let, let me just give you this right here, and we have this page right here, let's, because some folks will say, you know, they're unbelievers, but we're not really saying for the unbelievers, but we're saying for those who are, you know, the, the knowers, those who are seeking, you see this right here, see if you can, I don't know how clear it's going to be, but see if you can pause that and check it out right there, right, and I'm going to read just a portion of this, in fact, it's talking about the whole Solomon and Sheba history, our story right here. That's the real foundation for we as Afro-American Judahites. You know, so, so overstand the fullness. It's like His Majesty and Ethiopian, the African, the Sion. It's like, that, it's like that capstone, the true capstone. And when you overstand that, then a lot of other things that are going on in the world, the new world, um, um, disorder or whatever, it makes a lot much more sense right here. So it says right here that... Um, Speaking about the Ark of the Covenant, it says that the priests who accompanied the young prince, speaking of Menelik, and talk about how Menelik returned to Jerusalem for his bar mitzvah, for his confirmation at the age of 12, Menelik, the son, did not, or did, did come back, did come back and remain in Jerusalem until he was 25. His father, realizing the designs were being made upon the young prince's life, gave him a company of men with whom to go to Ethiopia. The priests who accompanied the young prince deceived, well, it says that they deceived Solomon. That's questionable, but let's just go with this, because um, this was actually Jah's will. You know, but anyway, deceived Solomon and carried away um, with 
them the original tables of the law instead of the copy which the king had prepared. They are to be found this very day at Oxum. You know, and now we have an opportunity, you understand, to contribute to that work of building a new tabernacle, you understand, a new, uh, rather, a new temple as tabernacle. Tabernacle is a tent, but a new, a new temple based on the tabernacle foundation and groundation for the Tabota Tzion. Um, Brother Ras uh, Siddiqui, you understand, we, we posted that a couple of uh, vids, or well, several vids ago. Go check that out. Check out his website, because this is what, not when we connect us to the get money, the get wealth, you understand, and we recognize for what true purpose it is. Because we can get money and we can get wealth, but if we don't get it for his purpose, then there's a curse that's attached to it. But then when, when we are in his purpose, it is just a, it, it's the least of the blessings that Yeshua HaMoshiach, you understand, in the will of Abba, Father, has for us, right? And it's real. It may seem supernatural, but remember, it is spiritual. You understand? And, and, and the spiritual man. I mean, notice what Matt said about spiritual power. He speaks about spiritual power, right? And so that's, that's basically true supernatural power in Yeshua HaMoshiach. You understand? We have to remember in the right order. Otherwise, it's out of order. Menulik the first, or Kedamawi Menulik, um, was the first king of Israel in Ethiopia from whom Haile Selassie, the Lion of Judah, traces his descent in an unbroken line of 613 kings. Now, one could put a question mark right there, because like 613. I mean, that's the Torah, that's the law, the, that's the law, the statutes, and the judgments. Like you ask a, a Euro Jew or a black Jew who's in the know, you know, how many commandments there are. You know, and we don't really look at like ten commandments. We look at that's one command right there with ten articles. It's the Asher uh, Te Alat or the, you know, the ten words. You know what I'm saying? It's the ten words, the ten articles. But let's just go on a little bit more. It says that Haile Selassie's connection with the Coptic Church is due, they say, to diplomatic pressure from Britain which requested in 1896, after the Ethiopian-Italian War, that all kings coming to Ethiopian throne be Coptic Christians. Maybe that's the, that's the information that was out there, but that's not really completely accurate. You know, and let's understand that right there. It's because of the person of, um, I'd say, um, Tedros, who, who Tawujos or Tedros was and what he did and what happened in his particular, in his particular, um, 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 time. But listen up still. This is still a, a, a very good testimony. It says, however, the court at Addis Ababa is closed for business on Friday afternoons and all day Saturday because they keep the Shabbat, the Shabbat, you know what I mean? They keep the, they keep the Senbet, you understand, that rest. It says to labor so we enter into his rest. You know, saying into his rest. Now there's the shadow of it, Old Testament, and there's the substance of it in Yeshua HaMoshiach. But when ones read the Old Testament without the knowledge of the Son of God, there, there's like a veil over their eyes in what they are reading, Yovas, and therefore they're blind to that spiritual and the overstanding. But it says that business is closed in Addis Ababa on Friday afternoon because evening and morning. It's not like we do in the West, or the West tells us from, from GMT time, Greenwich, Mean, whatever time, you, you know, where, 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 you know, how they do it, like after 12, midnight is, 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 is the new, you know, it's crazy. No, it's evening, the evening, you understand? So it's Friday evening, right? What, what you call Friday evening in, in the Western Gentile misunderstanding, mistranslation, right, is actually, according to John, it is, it is the Sabbath Eve. You understand? Know it's the Senbet Eve, or quote Saturday, quote end quote. You over so you can understand that. So it's closed for business on Friday afternoons and all day Shabbat day. No Hosea pork is eaten in his palace, and he follows the Falasha or the Beta, the Beta Israel ritual. Haile Selassie is the present king of the house of Israel, and this is proof that David should never lack a black man to sit upon the throne of Israel. 
when Mussolini overran the country, Hala Selassie stopped at Jerusalem to pray in Hebrew before proceeding to the League of Nations. It is from Addis Ababa, right, Addis Ababa, that I derive my authority as head of the black Jews in the United States. We are Africans or Ethiopian Hebrews. So when we're confronted with some of the, the, um, the project, uh, you know, the ghetto Israelites, you know, and they are Israelites, but remember what, what, what the word says, that they have a zeal, but they lack that, that, that knowledge, and that they seek to establish their own righteousness. You know what I'm saying? This is the foundation, and, and the scriptures tell us if we neglect our teachers and those who have taught us, you know what I'm saying? And these are the ones who came before. So we're just showing you this right here so ones can understand this in its proper con context. This is a very important book right here. Check it out on, try to, try to search for it. We, I think we were able to find that there's some out there still, right? So knowledge of the holy. Wisdom is important and knowledge of the holy. But he's saying, I haven't got that. We're here in Proverbs chapter 30. It says, who has ascended up into heaven or descended? See, someone has told you, told you that, oh, this is just metaphorical. This is just a, 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 a parable. Uh, it, you could read it parabolically. You know what I'm saying? The Bible is multi-layered. You could see it like that. You know what I'm saying? But now as we're beginning to see more and realize more and more, you know, like all knowledge is becoming, more knowledge is becoming revealed. We're learning more things that we have to look at this Bible again and say, the Bible was advanced. You know what I'm saying? We had a real low, low understanding in this Western Gentile mis mistranslation. It says, Who hath gathered the wind in his fist? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? You see, so when we talk about making ends meet, we have to think about who has established all the ends of the earth. O Jah, in the name of Joshua, establish these ends. Make these ends, you know, when we're dealing with those things, make them meet. You know, that's a prayer there, too. But it says, what is his name? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If thou canst tell. This is interesting for Old Testament teaching, speaking of father and son. You understand? Because there was a time when the, the, the rabbis or the, the Jewish, the masters of Israel, when they knew and acknowledged the Ab, Wurlid, and Menfes Kedus. It's not a New Testament thing. If you come from a Gentile, white, Western misunderstanding, well, it seems new to them. Just like this book right here also seemed new to them. You know what I'm saying? Because they wasn't, but it was an old, it was an old thing. Metaphor Hanok, or the Book of Enoch, which we publish again in the 18, from the 1893 um, printing of it. You understand? And we love to publish the older prints of it. You know, what the books that they expected that we would never be able to read, you know, and they didn't even think about us in the equation. You understand? Uh, Father, Father knew what he allowed them to do, even through permissive will, if not imperative will. Verse 5.